the Mormon Church will change its stance on gay marriage in two years. And here is why I say that. Last night, Instagram served me this person's profile, specifically this post of this man standing in front of the conference center. He explains in the caption that he is gay and practicing Latter-day Saint Mormon. Of course, I assume this to mean initially that he is celibate because the church's current stance is that you can be gay, you can be active, but you cannot act on your same sex attraction. Imagine my surprise though, to find out that he recently got married in a very beautiful and opulent wedding in the Utah state capitol. He and his husband are super cute, and so I'm honestly just thinking at this point, when is this man going to be excommunicated? Imagine my additional shock to realize that this man had a book that was available for a limited time in Deseret Book. Honestly, what surprised me the most about this person's profile is not the fact that his book was featured in Deseret Book, but this post of him and his then, I guess, fiance or boyfriend at the Washington DC temple. Before clicking on this comment section, I would have bet a large sum of money that there is no way that the church would have any sort of positive interaction with this post because it's two gay men standing in front of the temple, the most conservative Mormon place on earth. And yet the Washington DC temple Instagram liked this post and shared this comment below. And that's why I say this is not the Mormon church of my childhood. This is not even the Mormon church of me in college. The Mormon church is preparing to make a foundational doctrinal shift and we can look at church history to see how this will play out. For more than 20 years, the church did not allow black members of the church to receive the priesthood or temple ordinances. Scholars agree that the civil rights movement ended in 1968, meaning that the priesthood ban ended 10 years after the end of the civil rights movement. However, we see the same rhetoric and language used around black people receiving the priesthood as we see around gay people having the opportunity to get married. It's not a matter of policy, but a direct commandment from the Lord, and it is founded on doctrine. 1978, the first presidency revealed that they had been praying earnestly in the temple, and they had finally received the revelation that black people should be able to get the priesthood. Just as we see active members today sharing that they believe that gay people should have the right to get married and how so many members are seemingly very pro-LGBTQ, there was also a large grassroots movement amongst members for black people to receive the priesthood prior to the revelation. Three days after this revelation in 1978, Joseph Freeman was the first black man to receive the priesthood. I don't think it's too crazy to extrapolate that just as black people received the priesthood 10 years after the civil rights movement ended, that gay people will receive the right to marry in the temple 10 years after gay marriage becomes legal in the United States. Honestly, as a jaded non-believer, I see this as a way for the church to stop the hemorrhage of members leaving because of the church's stance on gay marriage. If you're an active member though, you could see this as just another example of the Lord continuing his revelation and continuing to restore his true church on the earth today. The use of the principle of continuing revelation, I believe, is one of the number one things that has kept the Mormon church alive and thriving and has brought it to be a hundred billion dollar corporation over all of these years. I don't think it's too crazy to see Mr. Charlie Bird being someone like Joseph Freeman. Someone like him being one of the first people to be married in a few years in the temple after there's a major revelation reveal. So 2025, I'm gonna call it. 10 years after the federal government says gay marriage is legal, they will allow gay people like Mr. Charlie Bird to be married in the temple.